Nintendo has dozens of franchises under their umbrella, yet not all of them can be as massively successful as Super Mario, Pokemon, or Zelda. I've previously covered two often overlooked franchises on this channel, those being Star Tropics and Ever Oasis, and this time I'll be delving into a more recent title that fits this category, Astral Chain. Astral Chain is developed by Platinum Games, a third-party studio that has had a close working relationship with Nintendo, having created the Bayonetta series as well as assisting Nintendo in the development of Star Fox Zero and Star Fox Guard. Platinum has also been behind some other stellar hits over the years, such as the multi-game of the year winner Nair Automata, the well-received Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and the cult classic Vanquish. They even lent their talents to crafting the combat of the acclaimed Final Fantasy XVI. They've also had their fair share of clunkers, too. Their licensed games, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan, and The Legend of Korra were almost universally panned, and 2022's Babylon's Fall is one of the biggest gaming failures in recent memory. Thus, all of these factors make Astral Chain the perfect title to examine for this installment of Trash or Treasure. But before we begin, please make sure to like and subscribe, ring that bell, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and snap into a Slim Jim. Oh yeah! <clears throat> anyway, sometime in the near future, humanity has depleted most of the Earth's resources. Faced with this extinction-level event, scientists researching for solutions discover a way to access another dimension, which they call the Astral Plane. The Astral Plane contains a near-unlimited supply of resources that can be used to sustain the human race. However, the Astral Plane is also home to a vicious race of monsters dubbed the Chimera, who not only have a taste for human flesh, but are invisible to the naked eye. The government conceals the existence of the Chimera so as to prevent the public from panicking, but slowly but surely the Chimera begin to break through to our realm, launching an unseen war against the innocent populace. The Neuron Police Task Force is thus created to combat the Chimera using special gear that can not only allow them to see the creatures, but effectively do battle against them. This is done through the utilization of legions, subservient chimeras who are chained by a literal leash to their welders and granting them potent abilities. You are the newest member of Neuron, playing as either the male or female sibling in a set of twins and the adopted child, the Task Force Captain. Astral Chain's plot consists of many wild, wacky, and explosive events that one comes to expect from a Platinum Games title, along with as many twists and turns as a roller coaster designed by Hideo Kojima. Some may be turned off by the complicated, jargon-heavy story, while many Japanophiles will likely revel in this cyberpunk adventure. If you found yourself engrossed in Metal Gear, you'll be right at home here. The story is propped up by a memorable cast of characters that give the tale a bevy of personality. You have Max, the player character's adopted father and grizzled captain of Neuron, Alicia, an easygoing veteran of Neuron that poorly hides her crush for the protagonist's father, Olive, a former newscaster who is much braver than her fragile looks would have you believe, and Dr. Brenda Moreno, a tough, studious professional who secretly has a love for the Task Force cute mascot, Lappy the Dog. Perhaps my favorite character is that of Marie, a former traffic officer who is brought onto the team to provide moral support. She does this by donning a full bodysuit of Neuron's mascot Lappy and cheering people on through acts of positivity. Marie strives to keep her role as Lappy a secret from the rest of the task force, but her clumsy nature means that she's not all that convincing. It's hilarious how everyone just plays along with the skip just to humor her. There's also a hacker named Hal, 
yeah, seeming nod to Metal Gear, that enters the story about a third of the way in and serves as your companion by piloting a remote drone. As previously stated, you will either choose the male or female half of a set of fraternal twins. Regardless of your choice, the other twin is referred to by the gender-neutral name Akira, and aside from a different voice actor and some minor dialogue changes, Akira's role and personality remain identical. Akira shows exceptional prowess, just like the player character, however early on in the story they begin to be overlooked by their more adept sibling. This leads to a sort of friendly rivalry between brother and sister, where Akira believes they must push themselves harder to prove that they too can be a hero. Astral Chain features a silent protagonist, which is a little surprising considering there is a voice actor for both siblings. Still, the developers have done a great job allowing this character to stand out in their own right, being among some of the better silent protagonists in gaming, such as Link from Zelda. Players are able to lightly customize the protagonist in the beginning, changing skin tone, hairstyle, and color, and assigning them a name, though it's all purely cosmetic. And if you have a fear and commitment, don't worry, because all of this can be changed at any time between chapters. There are 11 main chapters in the game, with a 12th serving as an epilogue and packed with in-game challenges. Most all chapters follow a similar structure that's split into three parts. The preparation stage, the exploration stage, and the combat stage. Most preparation stages take place at Neuron's headquarters. Here, you're able to customize your character, buy support items, upgrade your equipment, practice your combat abilities, take on a small number of side quests, converse with members of the squad, and even replay past missions from your desk computer. The exploration phase takes you out onto the field, usually into a section of the city where Chimera have been sighted. Here you'll get to learn all the details of the mission at hand, investigate and solve crimes, take on a larger number of side quests, find hidden items, and more. Often, the most time is spent here, especially if you're striving to complete as many objectives as possible. The exploration areas are quite wide open, with lots to see and do before turning your focus into combat. Most of these activities can be skipped, but you'll be missing out on not only crucial experience and plenty of useful items, but also a heft of world building that is essential for immersion. The combat phase often closes out each chapter and has you enter the astral plane to pursue the culprit or remove them from the earth realm. To reach your target, you will of course have to battle through a gauntlet of underlings that stand in your way as well as work out some Zelda-esque puzzles. Combat is Platinum Games' bread and butter and Astral Chain is no different in providing the fast-paced, stylish, over-the-top, deep combat fans have come to love. Initially, the player has access to just a short-range melee weapon and a ranged attack, which they can switch freely between to string together combos. Then, over the course of the game, the player will assemble a roster of five total legions that have their own weapon types and special abilities. The Sword Legion is the most balanced and varied, and its sharp blades are useful in most any situation. Their Spinning Blades attack is great at making mints meet out of strong foes or large groups of weaker enemies. They also possess the ability to land precise hits with their blade, slowing down time for a short period and letting the player score a critical slash and interrupt most attacks. This ability is also used to solve puzzles out in the field where objects blocking your way must be cut down with precision. The Arrow Legion excels at range, and they can easily pick off enemies with their long bows. Flying enemies, in particular, fall quickly to this Legion's arrows, and their arrow rain can deal major damage when they're forced to fight up close. Players can take aim with the Arrow Legion to score critical hits and to hit faraway targets, both inside and outside of combat, though this can leave you vulnerable if done in the heat of battle. The Arm Legion is the powerhouse of the crew, dealing massive damage with their large and mighty fists. This Legion is 
quite slow, but is great for taking down the hardier baddies when encounters. The Arm Legion can also lift heavy objects with ease, which is handy when clearing the way or when in need of a weapon in a pinch. Protagonists can also ride along this Legion, giving you more direct control of their attacks and providing protection from hazardous obstacles on the ground. The Beast Legion is the fastest weapon in your arsenal and is excellent in providing hit and run attacks on all matter of foes. Their Howl can stun all nearby enemies, even most bosses, giving you ample time to mop up the arena. Players can ride atop the Beast Legion in and out of battle too, which is great when you need to travel long distances or when you must make a quick getaway. They can also dig underground to find hidden items, and their ability to track objects via scent is critical in solving many puzzles. The Axe Legion is the final one you wield and essentially a walking battle tank. His huge axe is very slow to attack, but can deal brutal damage to even the most heavily armored of bad guys. He can even deploy a shield to protect you in times of need, thus saving you from the worst attacks, or essentially extending your life bar. Legions fight autonomously, but can be controlled by using the right thumbstick. They will typically duel with the enemies closest to them until you give them a particular command, such as using a special ability or ordering them to rush a foe or call them back with the press of a shoulder button. While maneuvering a legion, the chain that they're tethered to can actually be utilized as an additional weapon. Wrapping a foe up with the chain will restrain them for a few seconds, letting you score in some free hits or focus on taking out other enemies on the field. Catching a charging enemy with the chain turns it into a type of slingshot, stopping their assault and sending them back with force. This is exceptionally creative and provides yet another helpful avenue in an already deep combat system. Finishing combos, dodging attacks at the right time, interrupting attacks, and other actions have a chance of triggering a sync attack. These special moves require the player to pull the left trigger just as the screen flashes and have the Legion combine with their user to extend combos, provide attribute bonuses, bind enemies, and other useful abilities. Be careful not to rely on your Legions too much though, as each has an energy meter that slowly trickles down while in use and will deplete even more when using abilities or taking damage. Withdrawing them from battle will quickly replenish their power, making them fresh for more fighting, but should their energy ever reach zero, then you're prevented from using your legions at all for several seconds. This can be a death sentence in some battles, as your legions may be your saving grace against some attacks, or is serving as the perfect distraction in a tense conflict. All of this is done in real time while you're still performing moves with your protagonist as well. Yeah, you have to keep an eye on both the player character and your legion, issuing commands to both while simultaneously monitoring your legion's energy bar, all in beautiful, fast-paced combat. It sounds complicated, and while Astral Chain isn't always easy, Platinum somehow makes it all work rather seamlessly. Within minutes, I found myself pretty comfortable with this robust system, something I think can only be possible in a game from Platinum. Astral Chain offers a system to level up your legions using an upgrade tree that sees you spending both points and items to unlock new abilities and stats. The highest tiered abilities require some extremely rare items that can only be found by completing in-game quests and serve as a sort of ultimate move reserved for completionists. Still, I kind of like how it's implemented, forcing players to use the gamut of their legion to ensure that they are fighting fit while having the items required serve as roadblocks so that players don't grind and become needlessly overpowered. Astral Chain isn't without some hiccups though. 
the camera, unsurprisingly, can cause a bit of frustration, especially when fighting in tight areas where you're pushed up against a wall. There is a targeting system, but I found it unreliable in most situations. Another issue is that only one item can be assigned to a quick use button at a time, which forces you to use a radial menu when needing access to another tool. The game does pause when doing this, but only temporarily, so if you can't find what you're looking for right away, you're likely going to take a walloping. For any players that aren't the most adept at these kind of action games, you'll be happy to know that Astral Chain features four tiers of difficulty, ranging from the I just want to play for the story easy mode to the I'm prepared to break a dozen controllers hard mode. I appreciate the degree in which the developers made the game accessible to players all across the spectrum. That doesn't stop the final boss from being just an insane test of skill, however. Without going into too many details, Astral Chain's last story mode battle is a long, brutal gauntlet, which by the way comes after you've already slogged through a few lesser boss fights and truly throws everything that the game has at you, forcing you to master the use of all of your legions. It's the kind of absurd difficulty jump you expect from an optional endgame boss. Seriously, playing on the third highest difficulty, I had never encountered a real game over in the game until the very end, where I was met with death no more than half a dozen times before I had to attempt at an easier level. I was finally able to conquer this brute on my preferred difficulty, but man oh man, was it a challenge. Legion can also be equipped with accessories that boost their stats or offer new abilities all on their own. This is handled a bit more clumsily, I think, than the upgrade tree. Many accessories need more than a single slot to wear, which players will first have to acquire by leveling up. Accessories are also completely randomized in their attributes, thus many feel like a waste because they have such a bad pairing of traits. You should have noticed by now though that Astral Chain is a visual marvel on the Nintendo Switch. Sure there are a few jagged edges and some textures could be better defined, but that also seems a given on this hardware. What is astounding is how much action is always occurring on the screen and with zero slowdown. In combat, the sparks fly as swords clash, explosions erupt from finishing blows, swipes from claws leave particles in the air, and the most intense battles can almost look like a Jackson Pollock painting with the mishmash of colors and effects. Outside of battle, it's still impressive, with the artistic direction calling for numerous glitches in the environment, along with lens flares and floating particles, all contributing to the futuristic cyberpunk aesthetic. The music is also a banger. Composer Satoshi Igarashi is a relative newcomer to the video game music world, and while Astral Chain is his first credit as a full composer, he has been a notable contributor to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torda, The Golden Country, as well as Nair Automata and Bayonetta 2. Igarashi expertly blends electronica, metal, and orchestral sounds to create a distinct futuristic soundtrack that really feels like the beating heart of this game's world. I want to end by briefly discussing the co-op mode that was originally touted as a selling point but has since mostly been ignored by players after release. One player naturally takes control of the protagonist while the second player controls the Legion. More specifically, player 2 has greater control of the camera than normal, which can be used to guide the Legion around a little bit and they can issue commands for special attacks when appropriate. This mode forces players to both use one Joy-Con each, so there's no way to use two Pro Controllers, which really sucks. This co-op mode does add a different layer of challenge to the game, which a few gamers may find appealing, but most will be unsatisfied due to the frustration of never being in complete control like usual. Honestly, it feels like Platinum was forced to include this by Nintendo so as to appeal to the Switch's multiplayer capacity, and it should have just been scrapped. 
With that being said, even if the multiplayer isn't worth getting into, and the final boss is a pain in the rear, and the camera is your typical action game nightmare, Astral Chain possesses some of the most thrilling gameplay I've encountered in some time. It's a damn shame that it never got nearly as much attention as the Bayonetta games because, as much as I love me some Bayonetta, Astral Chain may rank even higher on my list of great action titles. It may be hard to find and a little expensive at this point, but I urge you to add this game to your Switch's library. It is most assuredly a must play. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. And thank you so much to all of those who already are. Hey, I'd love you to join me over on my Discord where I share additional insights and provide behind the scenes coverage of everything I work on for my channel. Use the QR code on the left to join me over on my Discord. Also, if you'd like advanced access to my videos and have your name in the credits, consider donating to my Patreon where only a single dollar will give you complete access to all of my perks. Special thanks to my Patreon late to gaming celeste r david l dan m and josh m your support is absolutely cherished thank you all once again and take care everyone